I know you guys have been waiting for a while, but it's finally time I'm continuing with the Monster High redesign series. For those of you who haven't seen my other videos, I basically take the designs from the Generation 1 and Generation 3 characters and redesign them in my style as 16 inch ball jointed dolls from scratch. <laughs> Many of you already guessed who I will be making and yes, you're right, it's Gulia. Blue Pixie did a marvelous job again sculpting her face and her glasses. So without further ado, let's get our brains working, our hands ready and mix some resin in order to print the doll. All right, so for Gulia, we actually have to mix a skin tone because we need a light gray and usually 3D printing resin in gray is a little darker. So I'm gonna take some white and some gray and we're gonna mix some nice resin for Gulia and then we can hop on printing. So let's do that. love the beautiful cheekbones blue sculpted for Gulia's face. It gives her such a perfect zombie-like look, but she still looks so lively. I can't wait to paint her, but first let me explain to you what I even have planned for her. If you're watching my videos, there's a big chance that you are probably a big fan of this pretty country called Japan. You know, the land of the rising sun. You might see videos and posts about Japan and all the cool goodies that you can get there like rare pokemon cards snacks clothes and maybe even dolls so what if i told you that there was no longer the need to travel to japan or even speak the language to get your hands on some japanese goodies let me introduce to you zen market your japanese shopping cart where you can add items from any Japanese online store or auction. Buy from 10,000 plus Japanese stores, including Amazon Japan, Rakuten, Mercury, and so many more. Zen Market will store your items for up to 60 days for free, and they are offering a great customer service in 19 languages, trusted by 2 million users worldwide. But Elisa, how do I even get started? Worry not, I got the best deal for you. You can register your account for free and get 750 Zen points if you use my promo code Moonlight Jewel, where these 750 Zen points can be used as 750 yen of the international shipping fee. That's so cool. Zen Market is currently running a campaign called Omotenashi where you can get 15% off your international shipping fee for your first parcel between January 15th and March 15th. Just use the code Omotenashi2401 when paying for your parcel. So what are you waiting for? Treat yourself. Because you deserve it. A heartfelt thank you to Zen Market for being the middleman we desperately need and for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back into making Gulia. So for Gulia, I wanted to focus a little more on Generation 1 than Generation 3 because I just personally prefer Generation 1 Gulia. So her main colors will be red, black, white and blue. And I want to make her inspired by Y2K fashion and scene kits. So the plan is to give her a blue scene kit inspired haircut, a shrug made from mesh fabric, a corsage top in red shiny pleather, some huge baggy low rise pants with a bunch of pockets, studs, accessories and the like. Black and white pleather platform sneakers, a pleather bomber jacket with a bunch of patches and to top it all off, I also want to make her the coolest brain handbag to really complete the nerdy zombie girl look. So how about we start with that scene hair, shall we? <laughs> For her hair, I actually bought a wig on Amazon with 50 shades of blue. 
and we'll use all these different tones for the wig. I made her a fitting blue wig cap and start by gluing the darkest shades as the bottom layers. I already cut them shorter and slide my scissors down the strand to cut the top hairs a little shorter than the bottom ones. I then just keep going in the same manner and will again use my styling wax <laughs> for the taming of the hair. Artificial fibers like nylon are very hard to style because the fibers can be very stubborn, but with heat, hairspray and styling wax, you can literally mold it in shape. It's like the holy trinity of hairstyling. <laughs> to cut the bangs of the wig, I want to make sure to give her a side part and style the bangs sideways as well. I then use the medium colored blue hair for the next section of the wig and occasionally use either an eyebrow shaver or my scissors to cut the hair. And when I was done gluing the royal blue strands, I take the lightest strands for this wig and fill up the rest of the head with it. If necessary, I take my curling wand and press down the hair into shape. And and now it was also time to cut the top layers shorter and try to blend them in into the rest of the hair. I do that until the head is pretty much filled up like this and keep going in, chopping off hair here and there and styling it in place. For the final wefts, I folded these parting wefts around with heat and will now create a nice part with it. I glue these with my Uber Alles Kleber because it gives me some time to shift them around before they're cured. I then just cut and style them in shape as well and with that we have a really cool Seen looking wig. I really love this wig and it will look so stylish with her face and outfit in the end. So let's keep going. <laughs> Julia's face sculpt is really unique and she just looks so gorgeous <laughs> that I'm really excited to paint her. Let's of course start with some sprockles all over her face, some blush on the cheeks and around the eye area and give her lips a dark pinkish purplish vibe. When I was satisfied with the blushing, I can then go in and sketch out her eyeliner. I really wanted to give her a little bit of a Y2K tribal graphic eyeliner because I felt it would fit her really well so I try sketching out something I like and erase mistakes here and there with my exacto if necessary. I actually did not make a mock-up for the face up this time because I wanted to see how good I was at improvising. <laughs> I also decided to already sketch out her eyebrows so I have to spray her less times with Mr. Super Clear and afterwards I could finally go in and line her eyeliner with black acrylic paint. My brushes are a little worn out already so I had a hard time painting it this time. That reminds me uh, I have to order some new brushes right away. <laughs> I also add a little color to the inner corners of her mouth to create a lip line before painting on her lower lashes. Thanks to the worn out brushes, I actually needed two to three tries for this this time. Yay! <laughs> Eventually I made it work though and was able to reward myself by adding my favorite iridescent sparkles to her cheeks before sealing her a final time so I could add that super shiny glossy top coat to her lips and waterline. Because I am incredibly impatient when it comes to glue drying times, I decided to glue her lashes with some uhu glue so I could hop onto the fun part right away, gluing her some piercings. I decided for elaborate snack bites and a bridge piercing this time. I don't know why, but I really like bridge piercings, not on myself, but especially on my dolls. And of course, she needs some super subtle earrings. Just one on each side is something that I would totally not do, so I gave her a bunch of earrings. <laughs> Gulia of course also needs her glasses, but I wanted them to look more Y2K like, so Blue sculpted these and I printed them in clear red resin and just have to make them clear again with my UV top coat. I cover them in a thin layer of it from all angles and cure them for two minutes in my UV lamp. Afterwards they look like this and I think they look really really cool. Alright, let's finally make Gulia's eyes. I made these white eye bases with my eye silicone mold and some UV resin already and then used some powder blue acrylic paint paint to paint the iris. With a toothpick I then drop a drop <laughs> of UV resin into them and add a tiny black rhinestone for the pupil. I cure it for just about a minute before taking some more UV resin and fill up the eyes with it. For a catch light, I take a tiny little star sequin and place it into the iris. Air bubbles can be removed with a lighter. I then cure the whole thing again and then add the final doming layer with resin before sprinkling some blue glitter into the eye as well for some extra pizzazz. <laughs> 
I spread it with a toothpick and cure the eyes one final time. Afterwards they look like this and I think they turned out super cute. I really like the pale blue of them. And here is the finished face. I must say I really love this face up, but I know you're as curious as me. So let's put the eyes and the face together, shall we? Wow, it's always so crazy to me how beautiful a doll face looks with the eyes finally inserted. But wait, her glasses are missing. Yes, perfect. Ah, I'm so happy with this. But hey, we still got a whole outfit to make. So let's tackle that next. First, I want to make Gulia's mesh rug. For that, I first take this super tiny bodice and will sew on one side of the raglan sleeves, finished sides in. After that was done, I can then take the even tinier back pieces and also slap them on good sides in. To clean up the seam allowances, I will be using some seam tape because glue doesn't work as well on mesh fabric. Seam tape is great because you can just simply iron it on, then fold the seam allowance around and melt it down with more heat. I just made sure that the seams were cut cleanly before because, well, it's transparent and it will probably show otherwise. And now I will fold the sleeve seams together and sew them good sides in on both sides. After turning them inside out it looks like this and the only thing missing now is to clean up the bottom seam allowances of the top with some more seam tape and with a small velcro in the back the shrug is already done. I think these types of tops are a really cool accessory and really elaborate an outfit. Let's make her corsage top next. I will be actually using a skirt that I got for the fabric because I simply couldn't get actual fabric fast enough for this project but hey this will do. I cut the pattern piece out already and also pinned down the two little darts I need to sew for it. Now I will do that with some magic and afterwards I only need to glue around the top and bottom seam allowance of it and add a little closure. This is one of the easiest and fastest way to make a cool top. From regular fabric it will probably look a little bit more boring but this shiny pleather really makes it pop. <laughs> Alright, so one of the main pieces of this outfit is definitely the pants. I never made such wide low-rise pants with so many pockets before. So I really took my time here with the pattern and actually did manage to make a pretty well-fitting mock-up. Testing patterns like this before sewing the actual piece really helps, even though it's a lot more work. But hey, now we can start making them. As you can see, I cut the front pieces from black fabric already and first have to glue around the pocket opening seams. Oh yeah, and that was the day after I got my new tattoo, so please excuse my swollen head. <laughs> With the pocket opening glued around and stitched down, I can then add the pocket bags, which I will be making from the red pleather again. I place them underneath the front pieces and stitch them in place with a few stitches on top and side. And then I can slap together the front seams, finished sides in. Awesome! Before we are going to make a bunch of pockets, I can still sew on the back pieces along the side seams, good sides in. I make sure to iron the seam allowances nice and flat before now making sad pockets. I had to cut out a bunch of pieces for that and will first glue around all the seam allowances of them. That took ages by the way. <laughs> but after that they actually start to look like pockets. I also wanted to spice up some of the pieces and added a red fabric strip to one of the pocket bags using pleather and some seam tape and I also wanted to add tiny eyelets to the red pocket flaps and thread some rings through them just because I think it looks really cool. <laughs> Here you can see that I already arranged the pockets on the pants and will now carefully sew everything onto them. I also added some little red straps on the top pockets and will now add the prepped waistband and sew it onto the top of the pants. I ironed it nice in place and now close the back seam until the closure part before folding the pants open and hemming the seam from one leg all the way towards the other. I actually forgot to hem the bottom seam allowances of the pants, so you haven't noticed anything, okay? <laughs> and bam, the pants look so cool honestly already, but we're not quite done yet because the pants definitely need some bedazzling. <laughs> so first we definitely need some belt loops. I cut some pleather strips and attach them to the pants. I made that directly on the doll to see the placement better. And then I also decided to add tiny studs to the pocket flap of the top pocket and then some chains and rings to the belt loops and pockets. Perfect! And with that, the pants are actually finally done. I think these are probably the most intricate pants that I have made so far, but I absolutely love them. Not gonna lie, now I want to have a pair like this for myself. <laughs> Let's make the ribcage harness next. I did prep a little choker from white pleather off cam already and attached three loops with rings to it. I then continued to glue some straps on the 
left and right side of the choker and add a ring to the bottom of it. For the middle section, I prepped this strap with a bunch of rings and attached the top part to the center ring on the choker. And then it was time to add all the chains and rings to it. I basically thread it into the middle ring first and then glue the chain to the outside straps and in the end, top it off with a tiny glued on stud. This took ages. So let's speed up the process here. The final harness turned out absolutely amazing and I think it is probably one of my favorite doll accessories I have made so far. Before we make the shoes, I wanted to give Gulia one more clothing piece. Do you guys know these really cool jackets with a bunch of patches? That is exactly what I want to try this time. But since a mere black pleather jacket seemed a little bit boring, I decided I wanted to give it a red velvet lining without actually having to sew a lining jacket. How will I do that? Well. Let me show you. As you can see, I cut the front pieces for the jacket from black pleather already and now roughly cut out a piece from the red velvet fabric. I then place the pleather pieces onto some fusible sticky interfacing for patches and cut out the shape as exact as possible. I then iron the whole thing on, let it cool down a bit, peel off the protective layer, place it onto the back side of the velvet and melt it down with my iron. Now I just have to do the same to the other pieces and cut them all out. For the little front pocklets, I wrote pocklets! <laughs> Yeah, so for the front pocklets, I first glue around the pocket seam allowances and also top stitch it down. Now I can glue around the top seam allowance and then side seam allowances as well. I do that to both pockets and will now be able to sew on the pockets by top stitching them onto the front and side seams. I secure them a little with glue so that they won't shift around while sewing. That's my little secret cheating method for you today. You're welcome. After top stitching, they look like this and I can now take the sleeves and attach them to the front pieces like that. I also decided to top stitch the seam from the outside for a more authentic look. And after repeating the steps, I end up with these top front and sleeve parts and now just sew on the back side in the same fashion. To make the sleeve cuffs, I fold this pleather strip in half, stitch it on the top and thread a thick white elastic through it. I then pull the elastic tight so that the cuff ruffles together but that I'm still able to pull it straight and fixate the elastic in that position. I then add two sewn on lines onto the elastic, then cut it off, pin it to the sleeve ends and sew it nice sides in. I end up with something like this and can now finally sew together the sleeve and side seams. Seems about right, huh? <laughs> I have to now make one more cuff for the bottom of the jacket, then pin it on and sew it along the bottom seam allowance of the jacket. The result looks promising, so I took this collar that I cut from an elastic cuff fabric and pin it to the neckline of the collar. I sew it on while making sure to have no accidental pleats in it. Here you can see that I already pinned down the front seam allowances so that I can now place a zipper into the jacket as well. I thought a two-way zipper would look cool and I actually harvested it from the red pleather skirt. <laughs> With a sewn-in zipper, the jacket looks like this and not gonna lie, I'm kind of proud of how this looks. <laughs> but now it was finally time for the patches. I made this design in Adobe Illustrator and now printed it onto some white fabric vinyl. I cut it out already and now peel off the paper layer, place it onto some pleather and carefully press it on with my iron. I then cut it out and also place some fusible patch interfacing onto it and now just peel off the protective layer and press it on with more heat. It looks so cool, so I decided to make some more patches and basically go with the flow and place them all over the jacket. I tried to make them fit Gulia's persona and also added a bunch of small things that I found like tiny cherry charms, stars and so on. I actually found most of these in my stash because I'm a hoarder. <laughs> Lucky me for never throwing things out, huh? <laughs> I finished up this zipper with a cool skull from a phone charm that I totally didn't have laying around since 2008 and with that the coolest jacket I have ever made is done. I think jacket with patches are always kind of cool and will never really go out of fashion. They add so much personality to someone and I feel it's definitely something Gulia would wear. On to the shoes. I wanted to give Gulia some Rick Owens inspired platform sneakers. So I printed these shoe bases that are actually the smart doll shoe bases from my cyber smart doll just scaled down and was so insightful to already cut out the pattern pieces from some black pleather. I first will glue around the side seam allowances of 
of where I am going to add a zipper. I found this tiny metal zipper in my stash and add it to the shoe pieces like this. To prevent the zipper from opening up after shortening, I will add this tiny little metal piece from a zipper repair set by pushing it through the fabric and bending it around on the back. I can then cut off the zipper and make an amazing transition to sew together the back seam. To cover up the seam, I add a small pleather strip with glue and then it's time to punch in some small holes to the shoe pieces so that I can take these cute white eyelets, push them through the holes and then use my eyelet tool like a wizard wand to punch them in. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> I made a cardboard sole and now take the foot of the doll together with the sole and the tongue piece and glue the seam allowances of the tongue piece to the back side of the sole. And then I can also glue around the rest of the shoe until it looks something like this. And then with the power of the uwu glue, I join the sole and the shoe together. I just need to hold it like this for 10 minutes now. <laughs> in the end, I just glued around a pleather strip to make the line between the shoe sole and the shoe look a bit nicer and can then lace the shoe with some elastic cord that I had luckily still laying around. And with that, the shoes are done. I didn't add any more crazy details to the shoes because quite frankly you almost won't see them at all but I think these look really really cool nonetheless. But you know what also adds a lot of personality? A really unique handbag. <laughs> I am an absolute handbag enthusiast if you couldn't already tell. So let's fast forward to crafting Elisa and see what she has planned. So I really want to make Gulia a really cool handbag as well and online I found this really cool 3D file of like a brain cap or so and I scaled it down and printed it. So how about we use this as an element? Let me show you what I have planned. I start making the handbag by cutting the shapes for it from EVA foam with my laser cutter because it's just so accurate. And then I can use my favorite screw cleaver. I basically spray the EVA foam pieces and the red pleather fabric with it and then join the pieces together. And I know I don't wear gloves but it has a reason I don't wear them because I simply ran out and I had no time to buy new ones. I do that to both front and back piece of the back and also the side strip and end up with super sticky fingers of course. <laughs> After cutting the pieces down to just having seam allowances, I then use my trusty Alice Kleber to glue around the fabric towards the inside. I try to make it look as even and wrinkle free as possible and then we'll use this lining piece to cover up the foam on the inside. I really like this studded fabric. I do that to both sides and also prep the strip so that I can now assemble the back. I will be using the force of my Toxic Booga Contact Kleber for that and spread it carefully with a toothpick all around the side of the strip and on the old shaped piece. I wait until it gets tacky and then I press the pieces together carefully but firmly. The gap didn't look as great so I decided to spread some PVA glue around it and then add a smaller silver chain along the gap. I was sure this was gonna look nice but I didn't think it would look this nice. With the bodice and the lid of the bag prepped, I will now glue them together on the bottom of the bag with a smaller pleather strip. So I first glue it to the lid of the bag and then to the bodice. I then also add a chain to the inside of the lid as well and will now add small satin ribbon strips so that the bag won't open all the way down. For the back handles, I prepared these little strips with rings and simply glue them to the front and back of the bag. On the back side, I also decided to add these small tiny star studs to the strips. Now the bag still needs a closure so I made a small fabric strip with a magnet on one side, glue it to the front and then glue it with a second magnet attached to the strip to the back side of the bag. For the handles I fused together two strips of red pleather with seam tape and now thread them through the rings and glue them in place. For some pizzazz I also decided to add some more studs to the handles and then had the idea hey why not put spiky studs all around the side of the bag. <laughs> because why not, I guess. <laughs> but let me tell you, it was a good decision because it looks so good. <laughs> For the very last part now, I can finally take the 3D printed brain, spread some PVA glue on the inside rim of it and then carefully place it on top of the bag press it on and let it dry. And with that, I probably made one of the coolest doll handbags ever so far. It has brains, it is shiny and sparkly, and I'm just absolutely living for it. One more last thing and I promise then we are done. As you might have seen in my Clio video already, I started making custom doll stands for my Monster High redesigns. So I definitely wanted to make a custom doll stand for Gulia as well. So how about we do that with a little montage and then finally finish up this project. And 
And with all the parts together, I can finally assemble Gulia and finish this passion project. And I almost lost my cool when I saw her for the first time. Oh my god, oh my god, you are not ready for this, you are not ready for this. Guys, I can't believe I'm done and I just put her together and she's everything. So it's finally presentation time! Woohoo! redesign. I had honestly such a blast making her and I hope you love her as much as I do. In the next video I will also be making a redesign but of a different type of scale from teeny tiny to big. As always thank you to all my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing for your continuous support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you soon. Bye!